Much of what we're having today is a result of preteen camp. I don't know about you, but I got tired just watching them. They're full of energy, right? Uh, but not just full of energy, they were full of uh, love for one another and especially love for the Lord. And what a beautiful testimony that they have. And today you're going to see uh, the fruits of that as they come to the water of baptism. But as we begin, we begin with uh, Rebecca. Give me your name, Rebecca. Rebecca Coyne. All right, Rebecca, you step down. And Rebecca, you know and love the Lord Jesus Christ with all of your heart, don't you? Yes. The best you know, you, you love to lift the Lord up in yes. music and singing praises to him. And be based on your profession of faith, mm -hmm. it's my joy to baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, <laughs> raised to walk in a new life with you. Brother Gerald, chairman of our deacons, has the joy of baptizing his grandson. What a blessing. Oh. <laughs> yeah, this is my grandson, Tucker Lamont. And uh, Tucker... Uh, said he is confident that if he should die today, he would spend eternity in heaven. And, uh, yeah, amen. And uh, he was asked that, that uh, if, he, if he should die, and, and God asked him why he should let him in heaven, he said, because um, I have put all my faith in you, and you died for my sins, uh, for all my sins. So, Tucker, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We had a great time at camp, and today we get to baptize some of those that made decisions at camp. Tell them your name. Uh, my name is Aiden. Aiden. Aiden has the confidence that if he were to die today, he would spend eternity in heaven. If he were to stand today before God and God were to say, why should I let you into heaven? Aiden says, because I confess you as my Lord and Savior and I want to spend eternity with you. As the best he recalls, this took place at Trinity Pines Camp when he was nine. When he thinks about this important event, he says, I was excited to tell all the people about my salvation. Since he's received Christ, he sees God working in his life in the following way. I've started reading my Bible every day to learn more about God. He would like to um, thank his mom and his dad for helping him make this decision. Aiden, have you put your faith and trust in Jesus and him alone for your salvation? Yes. And do you desire to follow him with your, as your Lord? Yes. All right. Aiden, uh, upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, it is my joy to baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in the newness of life. My name is Brody Martinez. Brody has the confidence that if he were to die today, he would spend eternity in heaven. If he were to die today and stand before God and God were to ask him, why should I let you into heaven? He said, I believe that Jesus got beat and died for my punishment and sins and that he rose uh, from the dead on the third day. I put my trust and faith in him. As best as he can recall, this took place at church camp when he was 11. When I think about that important event, I remember I was happy with joy and excitement. 
Since he's received Christ, he sees God working in his life by equipping him to, for service in the following ways. I have, I have changed my behavior and embracing joy and happiness. He would like to thank Drew for helping him in this process. Brody, have you put your faith in Jesus and him alone for your salvation? Yes. Do you desire to follow Jesus as your Lord? Yes. All right. Brody, upon your precious enough faith in Jesus as your Savior and Lord, it is my joy to baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in the newness of life. Amaya Rodriguez. Amaya has the confidence that if she were to die today, she would spend eternity in heaven. If she were to be asked by God, why should I let you into heaven? She says, because I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. When she thinks about this important event, she says, it was amazing. Since then, she says, I know God wants me to tell other people about him, and I know he will change me. Amaya, have you put your faith and trust in Jesus and him alone for your salvation? Yes. You desire to follow him as your Lord? Yes. All right. Amaya, upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it is my joy to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism. <laughs> raised to walk in the newness of life. My name is Ava Costello. This is Ava, and with her, uh, her friend uh, Tatum Roberts has come. And Tatum is here because she's doing what Christ wants us to do, to bring our friends to Jesus. And so she's here as an encouragement because she invited Ava to come to church and to camp, and um, just very instrumental in helping her come to this point. Ava has the confidence that if she were to die today, she would spend eternity in heaven. If God were to ask her, why should I let you into heaven? She says, I believe that Jesus died for my sins and rose again. I put all my faith and trust into you as my Lord and Savior. As best as she can call, this took place at church camp when she was 12. When I think about that important event, I remember while I was at church camp, my church camp pastor asked deep questions. Then I started to hear and feel God talking to me. Since then, she has, um, since she's gotten saved, she sees God working in her life to, um, I've been more uh, understanding and more re uh, responsible. Uh, she would like to thank Tatum Roberts, Colleen Costello, and Miss Sarah for helping her through this process. <coughs> Ava, have you put your faith and trust in Jesus and him alone for your salvation? Yes. Do you desire to follow him as your Lord? Yes. Okay. Ava, upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it is my joy to baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in the newness of life. I want to just thank the church for uh, all the generosity that you had in our giving for camp because it helped all these different kids go to camp to help us to uh, share Christ with them. We've had other decisions that were made that hopefully they will uh, follow in baptism soon. And that next week we have Vacation Bible School, which is another opportunity that we have to reach our community and to reach kids. We're having a meeting after worship in the porch. If you've registered to volunteer, I would ask that you would come to that meeting. Um, and then we've got to start setting up for VBS for Monday. If you haven't registered but you would like to volunteer, you can join us for that meeting. Thank you. This morning I'm glad to talk to you about a local missions project that our Great Commission team helps with. 
You may have heard that uh, here in the Crandall Public Schools, there are three great afternoon Bible clubs. These after-school Bible clubs are sponsored and led by Rosalind Johnson, a member of our church. Now, the Great Commission team does not sponsor these Bible clubs. Rosalind Johnson does, but we're thrilled with the opportunity to assist her in this great ministry. This past year, at the three elementary schools, Walker, Martin, and Wilson, more than 500 kids participated in the Afternoon Bible Club. And we were so excited that as a mission team that we were able to provide them with gift Bibles for the boys and girls. And the Bibles that we were able to give are just like these. It's a kid's Bible, and these are the same Bibles that we use in our church here at Central Baptist Church. If the boys and girls are faithful to come to the Bible Club, then at the end of the year, each one of them receives a gift Bible, just like this one. This past year, we were privileged to give 250 Bibles uh, to the boys and girls in the afternoon Bible clubs, and your mission team was privileged to buy those Bibles out of our budget. We thought it was a wonderful project, and we were glad that we had the money, money that you contributed, so that we could buy these Bibles and give them to the children. Another aspect of the Afternoon Bible Clubs is the snacks that they're offered uh, each week. And our own Jason Center of Hope, which is another church project, provided the snacks each week for the boys and girls that come to the Afternoon Bible Clubs. We're so pleased that we had an opportunity to participate in this local missions outreach, the Afternoon Bible Clubs. Thank you for your generous support that made it possible for us to assist this marvelous ministry. Thank you and God bless. I think you're on, but I'll go if you're, you want to sing? Let's do a song together. Michael's going to make the announcement, so I'm going to sing the songs today. I won't take but a minute of time. I want to thank you so much for being here. If you are a guest, let me just say, this is important for you to hear. You have been prayed for. We have asked that God would send guests to us. So you have the privilege and the honor of being at your prayer today. So bless you. Thank you for, for being here. Amen. Uh, if you have, there's a guest card somewhere near you, if you would uh, give us any information. I know people are guarded with information today, but we'd like to connect with you. Uh, if you would just fill that out, out in the foyer, we have a gift for you. If you just take that to uh, Mike and Kim, they'll be there following the service. They'd love to connect with you and tell you a little bit about what's going on. Next week, we have, of course, VBS. Pray for that. Pray that God would use that in a mighty way. And in your worship guide, you'll see other things like Jason Center of Hope uh, annual banquet and fundraiser that helps us provide uh, so many things for the kids in the school system. It's well worth our effort and our time to give consideration to that. I want to pray over us. Father, we thank you for what we've seen today already in worship. Thank you for every one of these young people that have come to declare Jesus Christ to be Lord in their life. I pray, Lord, you would bless us now as we Lift up our voices in praise. Lord, you tell us in your word that you inhabit the praise of your people. And I just thank you so much, Lord, that we have that privilege here today to do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together and worship together. Yeah, let's stand together. As you're standing up, why don't you turn to somebody and tell them good morning. Can you do that this morning? Tell them you're glad to see them.
Are you warming up now? Well, it's a little, a little easy to warm up in Texas these days, isn't it? I love it. We're having a cool front come, I think, Tuesday. It's only going to be 103. That's always good. Sing with us. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old singing great today. I love that.
Come on, church. And he walks with me and he talks with me. Sing it loud. And he turns. Father, a hand. Thank you for participating today. Great job. Before he comes, he's on mission, the Bible says, to seek and to save that which was lost. That word lost uh, indicates value. I lose a piece, I I misplace a piece of string. I, I lose a diamond ring. It has value. If I say something is lost, that means it has value. And the Bible says that we are valued by God. Can you imagine that God loves us in such a way uh, that he considered us lost or valuable to him? And God is on mission. He's on mission uh, to this world so that uh, all of us take. I I was singing with the uh, choir, with the church. uh, Even so, come. And I'm praying, Lord, I, I, I am looking for that day to come. But... I want everybody who can be saved to be saved. So uh, let's get that happen, God. Let us be on mission until he comes again. And, of course, that's what this month is about. It's, uh, we call it Mission Month. All of our focus is to uh, remember how important it is to be on mission. You know, every believer is to have a ministry to believers and be on mission to unbelievers. Every one of us. Uh, God has established that we are to be on mission for him. We, uh, we are part of God's plan and purpose. Uh, one writer said, uh, we were planned by God's, for God's purpose and we were shaped to serve God. I thought that was a great quote. Uh, I do serve God, but how do I serve God in this life? Well, I serve God in this life by serving people. And so at Central Baptist, all the time we're talking about we are in the people business. That's what uh, God wants us to do, to be involved in the lives of other people. Just uh, because God has a plan and purpose for your life, however, does not mean that we are living God's plan and purpose. I don't think there are only a few people, I would say none, but I'll leave open a few that uh, hasn't at least sensed in their heart the wooing of the Spirit of God that he has a plan and purpose for their life, that God loves them and that they matter and that there, there is a purpose of God, that my life is, is, is not just about the here and now. There's more to my life than just living today. Uh, there is an afterlife. You know, there's never been a culture that did not believe in some sort of deity, that this thing of life just didn't happen by accident, but there is a design to it, a plan to it. And then those of us who have come to Christ uh, certainly understand what it is to know that there is something that God wants from us, that God wants us to be involved in his world. But the sad thing is that not everybody uh, either is coming to him or wants to be involved in his plan that have come to him. There are many people uh, that would tell you, yes, well, I came to Christ when I was a child in vacation Bible school, or I came to Christ when I was at uh, a camp uh, in, in my youth at some point, uh, but that was long ago. And you know, the truth of it is, 
uh, heaven's going to be heaven, so why would I care about rewards? So I'm just going to kind of be on cruise control, and I'm not really going to uh, listen to uh, the wooing of God in my heart about being involved. Uh, I'm probably talking to somebody in this room that has something in their mind like that. But I want to tell you today uh, that you'd be mistaken if you think that. As a matter of fact, Jesus uh, says to the followers of Christ in John chapter 17, in the same way the Father gave me a mission in the world, I give you a mission in the world. And so Paul wants to clear that up. Uh, Jesus wanted to clear that up with us. Mark 8, Jesus said it like this. If you're, if you're insisting on living your life for yourself, you're going to lose your life. In other words, you're going you're to waste your life. You're going to mess the whole purpose by the, why God designed you and placed you in this world. He went on to say, only those who give away their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will ever know what it means to really live. If you're attempting to live without God's purpose in your life, you're only existing, Paul said. As a matter of fact, in Paul's own testimony, in Acts chapter 20, Paul says this, the most important thing for me is that I complete my mission, that is, the work the Lord Jesus gave me to do. So uh, we're on mission. And it's not new with uh, the church age. It's always been true. God has always called his people forward to be involved in this world. We, uh, we, we weren't created and put on this world so that we could work and earn money and enjoy life. And then just be buried and, and, and go away and forgotten about that our life makes, uh, has eternal value and we make an eternal emphasis. As I said, uh, that's why we focus a month like this to be on focus uh, for our missions. And it is true that on the last Sunday of the month, or you can give before then, but that culminates a mission offering that we have this month. That, and every dollar that is given in this offering will go toward our world mission vision for our church, making a difference right here in our local school uh, system, right here uh, through Jason Center of Hope and Other Ministries that Dr. Terry has mentioned in the video. And then to our, to our state, uh, helping people come to know Christ. Michael uh, and the country boys are, uh, are, are going to be in, in, on the southern border. And we're helping them be there and, and support missions as people come into this country. We want them there. The first thing they hear is God loves you and you matter. Amen. Uh, and then around the world, they'll be in Ukraine uh, later in the year. Uh, God, God is putting missions in our heart. But listen, uh, it's more about giving an offering. It is to help us get focused that you have a mission and I have a mission and I am to live every day of my life on mission for God. I need to care about the lost world that is around me. Why? Because they are valuable to God. Amen. The word lost again indicates value. Well, I'm going to this month be looking in the book of Jonah. So if you'd like to open your Bibles to the book of Jonah, it's page 1151 if you have my Bible <laughs> in the Old Testament. And uh, I'm going to talk uh, about God's first missionary. I don't know if you've ever thought about it like that, but Jonah was God's first missionary that I can find in the Bible. He was sent on mission to a pagan world to tell them that God loves them, they matter, that the wickedness of their world has come before God. And just as, as he had to give an accounting to God in his life, we must give an accounting of God into our life. As I said, I know some people will say, well, uh, heaven's going to be heaven. What does it matter? What kind of rewards I have if I'm just going to heaven? Well, I want to go to heaven uh, because I want, to, I want to stand in honor of God. Amen. I want to glorify him in my life. I want to make all the difference I can make because I am believing that uh, I have an eternal purpose. And my life helps bring others to Christ. And in turn, they bring others to Christ. And in turn, they bring others to Christ and what a great thought that is, that we have an eternal difference in our life. And uh, 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 we're going to look at the book of Jonah in chapter 1. And if you have your outline, you may fill in this blank because I said some people feel like it's really not their obligation to live on mission to Christ. I think Jonah kind of had that idea in his mind, even though he is a prophet of God to his own people. He didn't mind being a prophet of God to his own people, but... Uh, not to the Assyrians. That, that was just beyond his imagination because it was so totally different. Uh, but if you choose not to receive God's invitation 
and you choose not to follow after God, be on mission for him. Have a, a ministry to other believers. Live on mission to unbelievers. Uh, there are several things that you, God will let you do that. I just want you to know, God will let you do that. Uh, but uh, it's not going to be good for you in the outcome if you choose to not follow God. And so if you choose to run from God as he did, and so many in the world does, and even in the church world, uh, write this down. Just accept my separation from God. Accept it. It's going to be reality. Uh, you're not going to be in fellowship with God as you could be. As a matter of fact, you're going to be out of fellowship with God. And there are consequences of that. Look at chapter 1, verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah. He said, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come before me. I talk about this often in our church. The word wickedness in the Bible literally means forgetting God. They have forgotten God. That God has no place in their life. Their wickedness, their, their mentality of living separate from God with no concern for God has come before me, he said. And then he said to Jonah, but Jonah arose uh, and uh, flee to Tarsus from the presence of the Lord. <laughs> There's a lot of people that just soon live out of the presence of God in their own thinking. Well, he was one of them. He went down to Joppa. And that's on the coast there just outside of Tel Aviv if you were in modern Israel today. And he found a ship going to Tarshish and he paid the fee and he went down into it uh, to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Now that's the exact opposite direction than God wanted him to go. If you'd have to look on the map, it was about 500 miles from where he was to Iraq, Iraq, modern day Iraq, uh, where uh, Nineveh was. And it's about 2,500 miles the opposite way. He was trying to get as far away from God as he could. And you know what? Our world is filled with people who feel like, you know, I want to go to heaven, but I really don't care about living in the presence of God. Well, maybe that was his thinking. But, and there's always a but in the Bible. And when you read that, you ought to give some thought to it. Uh, somebody said, this is uh, Jonah's big but. <laughs> but God spoke to him. Uh, it sent out a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to be broken up. So here are some lessons from Jonah about my mission of life. Number one, my life mission will come from God's word. Notice again verse one, he says, one day God spoke his word to Jonah. You know, I, I love the uh, testimonies that we received this morning from kids and then the ones they verbally gave. And, and one of the things, did you hear uh, what a couple of them said? Uh, God spoke to me. You, you see, you don't have to be an adult and have a, a great education for God to speak to you. Because God is speaking to all of us all the time. And God spoke to him. God's speaking to you. He's speaking to me. And say, well, how do I know? Well, God's word, God's, God's voice is found in God's word. Uh, some people say, well, I wish God would speak to me like he did Jonah in, a, in an audible voice. Well, he would probably be in the hospital in a psychiatric ward if, God, if you really did think God spoke to you. I, can you imagine? Uh, God, I think God does give inclinations to our heart. I think God does speak to us, maybe not audibly, uh, audibly but uh, clearly to us. But here's what I know. God does speak to us through his word. And today we have something uh, that they didn't have in the Old Testament. We have the New Testament where God specifically is speaking to us about his will and plan for our life. What an exciting thing that it is. In a world in time when so many people are saying, well, I just wish God would give me a sign. Listen, can I give you some good news? We can stop looking for a sign and start looking in Scripture. Listen, that's, that's clearer than any sign that you'll have, ever have. And here's what God said to him. I want you to get up and go to that great city, Nineveh. Now, as I said, Nineveh was the largest city and most important city, perhaps, in the world. It was the capital of the Assyrian Empire, sitting on the Tigris River. Uh, as a matter of fact, you've heard about this even in the news over the last few years. Have you heard in Iraq a place called Mosul? Mosul was the place, you remember when ISIS was doing their rampage and they were taking all the territory? Uh, this was one of the places they made their headquarters. Do you know what one of the things that ISIS tried to do while they were there? They're, they're, they're in that city through the years, through the centuries, there has been monuments built to the fact that Jonah came. 
It was so life-changing. One of the things they wanted to do was destroy everything that related to Jonah when he was there. Well, that's where this was. That's the very place this was. You see, the Bible talks about real and literal places and real and literal things. Why do I say that? Well, I'm going to get to a part in the story of Jonah this morning that a lot of people find it really hard to believe. But I'm going to say, if it's in the Bible, it's true. This was a real place. And the Assyrians were a wicked people, not just a, a, a wicked people. They were an evil people. As a matter of fact, if I were going to be liking them to any kind of, I would say they were like uh, World War II Germany, the Nazis. Uh, they were vicious and uncaring in the way that they treated people. As a matter of fact, cruel and brutal. They tore down everything in their path uh, that uh, wasn't, uh, wasn't theirs. They just took it all, much like Russia is doing in the Ukraine right now. How uh, They just decided, I'm going to take it over, and I don't care about a story. Everything that's there, just so I get what I want. That's exactly the kind of people that they were. And they were uh, enemies of Israel. They, they, they were uh, always against everyone, but especially uh, they were a threat to Israel. And uh, they treated everyone uh, with racial prejudice and uh, with hatred. And so, can I just say something about the call of God upon your life and the mission that God has for you? Uh, number one, uh, when God calls you, it's always going to be taking you out of your comfort zone. And can I tell you, this is one of the reasons we resist hearing from God. Uh, I don't mind God speaking to Michael. <laughs> I don't care if they have you running all over the world, Michael, doing all these things. Uh, but uh, I, 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 just leave me out of that. That's how people think, isn't it? Well, I want to tell you something. Everything that God has done in my life that I feel like that has had any impact at all has taken me out of my comfort zone. I'm telling you, being here on this pulpit right now, you don't know this, but it's out of my comfort zone. Uh, this is really not even my personality. Because when God speaks to you, it always calls you out of the normal into the supernormal, that supernatural. Listen, it requires faith because God's mission is never going to be convenient. It's not going to be easy and it's going to require effort on your part. Uh, if, if you're not doing anything at all, I don't think you're going to be hearing from God. Because God has something for you. God was going to call you out of your comfort zone. It requires faith because it requires us to love even our enemies. Now can I tell you, I understand Jonah to some degree. Uh, Jonah had, didn't want anything to do with Nineveh. Why would he? He was totally different from them in every way. Uh, he was different from the Assyrians uh, racially. First of all, let's just start there. And there was, there's always been racial pre prejudice. You know that, right? That's not just new uh, in, in the last hundreds of years. It's always been true. Matter of fact, people always have been against people that don't look like them. But can I tell you, it doesn't matter what you look like on the outside. This is going to pass away. Hey, I'm going to get a new body one day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I keep asking God, let me be at least six foot, God. Paul, that's praying I'll look more like Brad Pitt. <laughs> I just, I'm sorry, Paulette. I just, it just comes. I don't know. She really doesn't think that. Tom Selleck. <laughs> she looks at Tom Selleck and says, God, you did so good. <laughs> I lose control. Move on, he says. <laughs> but listen, uh, it doesn't matter what we look at. Do you understand? We are living souls. And by the way, we're all related. So get over yourself. And he had to get over himself. Listen, it, it's not hard. Lessons that we learned from Jonah about running from God, running from God and, and from the mission that God has called me to, always it's going to bring bad consequences when I do. If I run from God, my life will go downhill. I don't know if you uh, would follow me in the reading, but uh, notice again verse 3. He says, he went down to Joppa. He found a ship headed for the port of Tarsus. He paid the price to sell to Tarsus. He went down below deck hoping he would get as far away from God as he could. That's how the New Living Translation you know, going down not only indicates a geographical direction of his life, but it also indicated a spiritual direction of his life as well. That's what we don't think. We think that I can get away from God and everything's going to be fine in my life, but it's not going to be fine. If you're running from God, you have to accept the overall decline and downward spiral of your life. That's just how it's going to be. 
Uh, people say, you know, I, I, I don't understand why my life is, is always it's just going down. I just, God seems so far away. It seems like God doesn't care. God doesn't hear me when I cry out. Listen, uh, who moved? You or God. That's the point, isn't it? You, you may think that your life is going fine. You may be here this morning and say, well, Brother Shirley, uh, I'm really not, you know, a hot heart for God right now. I, I'm not pursuing uh, God's plan and purpose for life. Everything's going great for me. I think if you would have talked to the prodigal son after he left home with his inheritance, he might have said the same thing. Everything's going great. How's your life? Oh, it's great having the time of my life. Oh, my goodness, man. All the friends I've made, all the parties I'm going to. Oh, my gosh. It has been delightful until what happened. He ran out of every resource that he thought was going to sustain him. Because you know what? Your resources you think is good enough to get you through life is not good enough. They will fail you. And then the Bible says he came to himself without anything. And that's how a lot of people are. They think they can pay no attention to God's plan and purpose for their life. And their life turn out fine. I want to go answer the clue phone. It's not going to turn out fine. Uh, notice he purchased a, t- purchased a ticket. You always pay for running for God. You pay the full price. I was listening to the radio, KCBI this week. June Hunt said these words that I've heard when growing up. So many times, but it still is true today as it was when I first heard the words. Sin will take you further than you want to go. It'll keep you, uh, it'll cost you more than you wanted to pay. And it'll keep you longer than you wanted to stay. That's a great quote. You know why it's so great? Because it's the reality. It's the truth. Sin is never going to bless your life. It's going to destroy your life. Can I tell you this? Satan hates you. He cares nothing for you at all. Uh, God, you're, you're just going to be used by him. You're always going to pay for running for God. He faced a storm that was brought on from God. Notice that God literally threw a storm at them in the, in the Mediterranean Sea. He faced a storm, brought on from God. Listen to me. It's one thing uh, to face life's storms with God on your side. And it's another thing altogether when you're facing a storm without any hope Of God's help in your life in any way. He tried to hide from God. He was going as far as he could in the opposite direction. But listen to me. God not only knows who you are. But God knows where you are. And you may have fooled everybody else in your life. And they may think that you have a hot heart for God. But listen. God knows you and he knows where you are right now. And can I say you know where you are. It's no secret in your mind. You, you, you might have tricked everybody else, and it's easy. You can easily fool uh, people in your world, but you can't fool God. The psalmist hit this on the head when he said in Psalms 39, he was praying. He said to God, he said, I can never escape your spirit. I, I, I can never get away from your presence. If I go uh, up to heaven, you're there. If I go down to the grave, you're there. If I ride the wings of the morning and I dwell in the furthest ocean, even your hand will guide me. You, your, 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 your strength will support me I I could ask for darkness to hide me and the light shine around me to become night but even in darkness I cannot hide from you you uh, to you the night shines as bright as the day darkness and light are the same to you you're never going to get away from the presence of God and I know you may think well I can get away no no one can get away from the presence of God he is omnipresent. You know what that means? There's not anywhere he isn't. He's there. Are you? you, Did you know that God is already in your future? (laughs) Already in your future. Running from God creates a long, hard road home. You you can't care about being separated from God. If you're running from God, you just got to get out of your mind. You can't even worry about it. You can't care about it Uh, because you know what? You're just getting distance every day of your life. You, You have to accept the gap from you and God is getting further and further and further and further and further. Now you can run from God. Here's a great illustration of a guy that's supposed to be on mission for God. But he decided it's not for me. It's not what I want for my life. It's totally different from what I want. I don't mind being a prophet in Israel. I, like, I love Israel. But uh, not for those wicked people. And what he knew, didn't know is that gap was getting further and further and further. But God still was there. He couldn't get away from him. And listen to me. There is a consequence to every decision that you make. God has given us the freedom to choose. God, in his own design, 
Create us with a volitional will of our own. We can make choices and we can choose to totally disregard him. You don't have to love God. You don't have to obey God. You don't have to pretend even that God even exists in your life. And so many, sadly, even in the church world, live as if God doesn't exist. But God wants to love us because we love him. And he wants us to reciprocate that love back because we love him. So he gave us a free will so that we could love him out of our own volition. I can choose, but that is where my freedom stops. I have no control of the consequences of my choice. And you know that's true. There are natural laws. And there are divine laws. And there are eternally fixed laws. And they're not going to be changed. I have the freedom to... Uh, jump off of a side of a mountain. I, I, I was uh, on Discovery Channel the other day and there was people standing on top of a mountain and they had these uh, special parachutes. They were just jumping off. I thought, how cool would that be? If it worked. <laughs> because here's where it's not cool. Once you make the choice to jump off, you have no consequence to the law of gravity. It's going to take over. And you're going to be in its control. I want to tell you, my friend, you can choose to disregard God, not even to believe in God. Certainly not to give your life in obedience to God or even attempt to love God. But I'm telling you, when you make that choice, the consequence of that choice is over at that point. God wants us to love him because we want to love him. But there's consequences because just like the law of gravity will have the final word, amen? The law of God that's eternally fixed is going to have the, have the final word in your life. Amen. Number two, you have to accept the consequences of the eternal fixed laws of God. I've been talking about if I run from God, it will cost you. Notice it says he paid the price to sell. He paid the price. And, and, and not only the, the price is not on you, but it's to others. You have to totally not care what happens to everybody else because of your sin. You have to totally disregard that somebody else may be hurt because of the consequences of your sin that it brings on your life. And because they're connected with you, uh, they suffer also. Everyone on that ship was suffering because of the choice of Jonah. Do you understand that, right? That, that your choices affect other people in your life. Our lives are interwoven with so many people who love us and who are connected with us. Every choice I make affects everyone around me. I can't tell you the time I've sat in my office with men and women, teenagers, filled with regret and remorse. And they have said things like this to me, Brother Charlie, if I'd only known... If I'd only known what the decision I made was going to do to my mom and dad. If I only knew what the consequences of my decision was, was going to do to my spouse. If I only knew what the consequences of my life was going to mean to my children. And what it was going to do and the scars that is left on my life. And on the life of everybody around me. Oh, if I could live my life over how different it would be. But you know what? The scars are there and the damage has been done because no one can say, my sin hurts no one but me. And Jonah couldn't say that. And it wasn't that they wasn't even willing to help him. These were pagan people, but they were willing to try to help him. But you know what? No one can really make an impact on your life but God. No one can solve the problem in your life, in your relationship with God, but God. If you're running from God, you can think uh, about the effects it'll have. It's going to have a relational price tag. It's going to have a financial price tag. It's going to have a, a physical price tag. And it's going to have a spiritual price tag. If you run from God, God will oppose you. I want to tell you that to you. You say, I just can't believe that a loving God would oppose me. The Bible says, God gives grace to the humble. But what does he do to the proud? He resists the proud. I was in class in seminary. Seminary professor is a, a Greek New Testament scholar. I was talking about that verse. He got a couple big old burly guys up. And he said, Here, here's what that means. It means I've got the ball. I'm the running back. And I have two huge guys. And they're going to block a way for me. They're going to make a way for me. And, and when, I'm, when I'm humble before God, God has people out in front of me. He's making a way for me. Uh, but he, he says, when I become pride, God resists the pride. You know what it means? It means like those two guys are blocking for me. They turn around and join the other 11 guys. And now they're all 13 coming at me. 
Does that make sense? Are y'all trucking with me today? That's my sports broadcast for today. But he resists the proud. Listen to me. He opposes the proud. He gives grace to the humble. Innocent people will get hurt. You remember the story of Israel when uh, they were being led to the land of of, uh, promise. And Achan, one of the soldiers, decided to disobey God, do what God said he couldn't do. It affected the entire army. They were all defeated at a little small place they should have just walked by. But they rose up and defeated them because God is not going to allow it. It affects everybody in our life. First cause of the problem, however, is so caught up in their own sin, they don't even see the devastating results most of the time. They can't even see it, just like Jonah. Where was he? No, no, where was he? He was asleep in the bottom of the boat. They they were going through the storm. He was so disconnected. He was so comfortable. He didn't even realize the the problems that he caused. And how many homes are filled with people that are running from God, that are causing chaos in the whole home, and they're too asleep and insensitive to know what they're doing. It's happening in all the homes around us. Devastating results. Jonah fell asleep. They had to wake him up and ask him, what are you doing, man? And the longer you run from God, the worse it gets. Uh, they threw the car, uh, cargo over the boat trying to save. The, they begin to throw away valuable stuff out of their life. But listen, ultimately, ultimately, the world cannot help you. The world can't. Number three, you can run to God when things are good. Aren't you glad there's good news in the message today? Do you know why? Because God is a God of grace and there's always good news. The Bible says, listen to this. Verse 17, now the Lord arranged a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was inside of the fish for three days and three nights. And people, oh, I can't tell you. People want to bring this up and say that could not happen. Well, we're going to talk about that in just a moment. It can happen. It did. It, it not only can, it did happen because the Bible says so. As a matter of fact, it was so important to Jesus. Jesus related the illustration of his burial and resurrection to this story. It's a true story. It's not just something in the Bible. Jonah prayed in the Lord, uh, his God, from inside the fish. And he said, I, I cry out to the Lord. I'm in great trouble. And he answered, I called uh, from the land and from the dead, the Lord heard me. Man, God, aren't you glad that no matter how low you get, no matter what kind of shape that you're in, God hears you. And then he says, yet I will once more, uh, I, I, I look once more toward your holy temple. Look at uh, verse 7. Uh, As my life was slipping away, I remember the Lord. My, my earnest prayer went out into the holy temple. Those who worship false gods Turn their backs on all of God's mercies. Uh, I, I, he said, I will fulfill my vows. He's, he's, getting, he's coming to himself like the prodigal son in his own right. For my salvation comes from the Lord alone. Then the Lord ordered a fish to spit him out on the beach. What a great story. Well, sooner or later, you're going to discover that you're going to not just need God, but you're going to want God. You're going to want God. One of the things that's said in the military is this. There is no atheist in foxholes. Just a fact. You think you're all that and then some until you realize you're not all that and then some. And God will be there to show us mercy and grace. Aren't you that? Here, here's what God didn't do. God didn't look at Jonah and said, you're an idiot. That's what I would have said to Jonah. You're an idiot. He didn't scold him. Because you know what? God is a God of mercy and grace. He loves you. Do you understand God loves you? Uh, you're valuable to God. That's what I wanted to say. He didn't lecture him. If you would have only did this. Jonah, listen to me. I simply told you to do this, this, and this. If you would have, it wasn't a lecture. You know what he just said? I'm going to send help. And God prepared the storm and he compared to fish. Now, how many of you have heard? I'm going to have some, uh, something on the video for you in just a second. How many of you heard that a whale swallowed Jonah? It, it, it wasn't a whale. A, whale is not a fish, and the Bible says a fish. Couldn't have been a whale because whale's a mammal. So what was this? Well, uh, most uh, uh, theologians believe that it was a fish called a whale shark. Now, I want you, do we have that comparison? Do we have that on video? 
I have a slide for you. I was going to show you about this. Well, let me, okay, that's a whale shark. They're, they grow up to 40 and 50 feet long. That's a diver on the scale. Look at that. You could get a school bus and a whale shark. I mean, does this not blow your head, mind? <laughs> now, listen to me. A whale shark, watch this video. Look at it. Look at it. It's just, Mike, pull this up for me. They, they swim about three miles an hour. They don't have teeth because they, they get, they're fed through the plank and stuff in the, in, the, in the ocean. So it wasn't like a shark that was going to eat him. What did the Bible say he was going to do to him? He was going to be swallowed by a fish, 40 or 50 feet long, probably. Or he might be the, the supersized one. I don't know how God prepared it, so I don't, I don't know how it is. But people look at this story in the Bible and they say, it could never happen. Can you see how easily that would happen? You see, the Bible is true. This is a true story. And so when I talk about Jonah, don't, don't be blown off by critics who say, well, that could never happen. It did happen, my friend. And very likely, this is a guy or one of his relatives, distant past, <laughs> uh, prepared by God, swallowed him. I just want you to see that this is not just a story that you can hear on church and go, oh my gosh, wasn't that a cool story about Jonah? Man, this is a story to you and it's a story to me because this was real life. This really did happen. It really did happen. And uh, it was great news because if you cry out to God, he'll provide needs. He will give you strength when you're weak. Listen to what the Bible says. God said this once and for all. How many times have I heard it repeated? Strength comes straight from God. God's willing to give strength. You know, he never runs out of it. Those who fear God get God's attention. They depend on his strength. Uh, he gives us all we need. Not all we want, but all we need. He, he said, God is my helper. The Lord is the provider of my life. When you trust God and you step out by faith, you can trust God to meet your needs. You can do that. Isn't that good news? He gives help. Isaiah 25 verse 4 says, you protect the helpless when they are in danger. You are like a shelter from storms. Isn't that a good word? He is a comforter to us. Do you think... Jonah might need a little bit of comfort. The Lord, the Bible says in Isaiah 30, the Lord wants to show his mercy to you. He wants to, ri to rise and comfort you. The Lord is a fair God to everyone who waits for his help. He'll be happy. God's never going to force you to go against your will. If you want God to leave you alone, guess what? He will. He will. He'll let you run your race, uh, face troubles and crisis on your own. He'll even let you die if you're lost and face eternity on your own he will willing to do that but that's not what he wants it's not what he wants for your life not at all God had a fish to swallow him I was preaching about this one time this this subject and I said can you imagine three days in the fish you'd be bleached out by the immuno acid he spit him up on the beach can you imagine he here's this albino running <laughs> seaweed around him smelling to high heaven I think I'd listen. I'd either run from him or listen to him, right? After church, a guy said, you know what? That was the greatest, grace of gr uh, greatest act of grace that could have happened to him. I said, yeah, really, but he was still volunteering. He said, yeah, but pastor, he said, there's only two ways out of that fish. <laughs> I said, amen. <laughs> it was grace. Listen, if you're running from God... You're trampling underfoot all the moments of God's mercy that have been yours. God is pursuing you. Psalms 95 says this. Today, if you hear my voice, do not harden your heart. It says it again in the New Testament, the book of Hebrews. Today, don't harden your heart. Why? Don't trample underfoot the day that God has given you of grace and mercy to make an impact for God. That's all he wanted from Jonah. Make an impact. Uh, a world is waiting you. Your life is going to make a difference. And we're going to see later in this study, Nineveh was transformed. It worked. God changed lives. Listen, don't trade God's purpose for chaos. Don't do as Solomon said, chase after the wind. 
And if you're living apart from God's purpose, that's really all you're doing. God still has a plan for your life. Aren't you glad that it doesn't do away with God's plan? He still has a purpose for you. You may not believe God cares, but he does. You may not believe that God is reaching out, but he is. You may not believe God uh, cares. He does. You may not believe. You may believe that he's even given up on you. He hasn't. He didn't give up on Jonah. You may believe it's hard to get back with God, but it's not. But it does require a decision on your part. Amen. Michael is coming right now. I want you to stand with me. I I, I don't know uh, where you are with God. I do know this, that this message was for somebody in this room. I, I know that. And there's somebody here that needs to hear it. It may be somebody that has never invited Christ into their heart. It may be. That you've never been saved. You think it's too hard for you. You're, you're beyond the love of God. You're not beyond that love. You may be a believer and so out of fellowship with God. You no longer feel connected with God. You know that you've not lived out your purpose. And it might be that you're in the storm of your life. And that storm is for God to wake you up and say, come home. Let's come back. It could be that you're just not a member of a church anywhere and you know that you need to be and so God has called you somewhere and you're sensing that it might be here why don't you come and talk to Dr. Terry or myself or Kevin we're here for you as Michael sings I invite you to come Father right now Lord I ask you to take over and do what only you Holy Spirit can do draw men and women and boys and girls unto yourself as a testimony of children may we hear your voice today Respond in Jesus' name. All to Jesus I surrender all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust. Him in His presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior. might be for some so intimidating to come forward and have eyes on you. You don't, it doesn't have to be that way. I'm here. Dr. Terry's here. Kevin's here. Uh, after service, you can come and talk to us. Or during the week, you can call and I'll make an appointment. We will, we will meet with you and talk to you about your spiritual need. We want you to know that. Again, if you're a guest, I remind you, we want to make contact. We want to connect with you. We have a gift for you today. If you'd go out in the foyer, Mike and Kim are going to be there to meet you. We'd love uh, to get to know you better and uh, connect, as I said, with you. Let you know uh, what our ministry is about. Vac- Vacation Bible School next week, for example, and uh, what, what that means and what it can mean for kids that you know uh, in this coming week. The following week's youth camp. Well, you need to know about that, and we want to help you uh, know about these things. I want to close by... Uh, pronouncing God's blessing on us. Aren't you glad that God is a God who blesses his people? Amen. Amen. And uh, in the Old Testament, Aaron was uh, instructed to say this to the people of God. I believe it's still to us in the people of God today. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Will you go in the peace of God today? God bless you. If you're going to serve in BBS, don't forget there's a lunch for you. Amen. Thank you for joining us online today. We are so glad that you were a part of the service. 
If you have any questions about what it means to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, about baptism, or how to join our family at Central Baptist Church, we would love to answer your questions. You can use Facebook Messenger to send us a message, or you can call or email the church. You will find our phone and email information on our website. Thank you again for worshiping with us today, and may God bless you and give you peace.